We were told there was no evacuation of the Magic Kingdom the other night when there was a fight and then banging noises that made people go into full-blown hysteria. A stampede of guests? No, surely not. Now, video shows that perhaps things were not what we were led to believe. And now we're all wondering why Disney is spending money on things that are not improving the guest experience when clearly there are serious problems at the Magic Kingdom. Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel that is changing hearts and minds simply by telling the truth, keeping you ahead of the culture curve and explaining entertainment. That is what we do here. We do it with a jolly good time and a smile on our face. Joining us today is Vash Sky of That Odd Place and That Park Place. Welcome back, sir. Thank you so much for having me on. Uh, yeah, this is a, a very, very uh, interesting discussion, I think, because we have been talking so long about expansions, about how they should be allocating more resources to the parks, but uh, never really talking about how those resources should be allocated, or at least in this amount of depth with this specific subject matter. So I'm, I'm uh, greatly thankful to be a part of this. Absolutely. And uh, folks, we thought this was a story that was a one and done. We did not realize that more video would come out that causes us to have doubts uh, of the official narrative. But uh, out of Sky News, this was uh, from Friday. We'll get to the new video in just a moment. By Claire Gilbody Dickerson. What a name! Mass panic at Disney World after fight and loud bang. A witness who was at the Orlando theme park with his family when panic broke out on Thursday night describes how security instructed people to take cover as many cried in fear of its Magic Kingdom Park coming under attack. This does not sound like what we were told. Let's get into it. Mass panic broke out at Disney World in Florida amid fears of a, well, you can read it, folks, only for police to find out it was a fight and popping balloon that uh, supposedly triggered the chaos. And by the way, I've reached out to someone who uh, alleges that they were an eyewitness to all of this. Hopefully they'll come on the channel. Visitors at the park posted accounts that people were running and children were crying during the confusion on Thursday night. Of course, we covered all of this. However, folks, there's some more interesting things to be said about it. Glenn Brady, who had been visiting the theme park in Orlando with his family from Kansas, said people running in, getting down in a crouch position. The security people were telling us to get down. We've got more comments here. We were walking down Main Street, heading out of the park when we, my family, was in one of the stores, and then all of a sudden people came rushing into the store. Um, Mr. Brady, a pastor, said security had instructed everyone to take cover, and many people were crying. Bash, one of the things that concerns me about this is that uh, that is probably not the correct action to be taken when there is a danger in the Magic Kingdom. Mm -hmm. uh, by telling people to crouch in place, you are leaving th them there to be taken down by a perpetrator of evil. Uh, yeah. There is plenty of backstage space, and you can let the guests into that space and get them out of the immediate danger location. Bizarre to me. But I want to show you this, uh, Vash. This is uh, this is the video that has me coming back to talk about this for another time. This is video of the Magic Kingdom of that night, and it does not it does not line up uh, based on what I have seen with what Disney said happened. So let's take a look at it. So, Vash, I want to talk about a couple of things, and this comes from Fernanda Lucio at mm -hmm. Fernucci's. Uh, I want to play it one more time, folks. I want you to, to pay attention closely. Vash, a couple things here. One, doesn't look to me like the work lights on Main Street are on. Two, the background music is still playing. I have no idea why that would still be going on. Turn off the music. I get it. It's yeah. Disney. You don't do it. Turn off the music. There are no P announce PA announcements telling people that they're safe. And it looks to me, Vash, like cast members are escorting huge throngs of people out of the park. That to me looks like, could be wrong here, it looks like an evacuation, something we were told did not happen. Let's play it one more time. Yeah, and I think we've got enough there. Uh, Vash, your thoughts, having now seen this video, something that seems not to connect with what we were originally told. 
Yeah, I, I, I have seen this video, and based on what I'm seeing, based on the police response and, and obviously cast members looking like they are escorting, like you said, huge throngs of people, it would seem to me that they're evacuating. It seemed to me that they're clearing out the park. So I, I, I don't know, I guess, what constitutes an evacuation by Disney's standards, but when you're looking at it and it looks like an evacuation, I could assume that that's what happened. Uh, I, I don't understand why Disney is attempting to say otherwise, uh, I guess, trying to, to, to not, uh, you know, cause any, uh, buddy to question the safety at their parks. I, I understand, but, but, uh, you can't do that by maybe <laughs> not providing the truth about the incident. Yeah. It's, it, it's not good. I would say Vash. Um, and as we talked about in the video uh, the other day, you know, this could have all been prevented if Disney security had been on the scene. Once the fight broke out, yeah. You could have just this. This could have been ended. We have seen over and over Disney not uh, interact with fights and stop them, and this is now the result. Uh, video now out, of course, that looks very much to us like an evacuation. Not sure how Disney wants to classify it. Uh, Vash, what makes this even the more interesting? And, and by the way, I'm not happy that Disney, you know, seems to have taken actions that that indirectly allowed people to be terrified. We showed the video the other day of, uh, you know, chaos inside the stores on Main Street. Uh, shelves, you know, stuff knocked over, people huddled in place. It's crazy. Um, yeah. Vash, this is what I'm, I'm a little frustrated about uh, in regards to the way that Disney has managed lately. Mm -hmm. Vash, this is Main Street USA we're taking a look at right now. And, uh, of course, we're looking at it through Google Earth. Vash, uh, not too long ago they were planning to put in a theater over here, Main Street yep. USA Theater. It's going to be a huge structure, and this uh, path back here was going to be permanently opened. Yeah. Um, there have been other efforts at uh, Disney and, and at Magic Kingdom to uh, increase the capacity and the throughput of Main Street USA and make this a place that is more optimized for large crowds. Uh, right now, Vash, instead of doing all that, they're planning to transform at huge expense uh, bulldozing Tom Sawyer Island, uh, taking out the rivers of America, essentially not adding capacity by doing that. Just they want to put in a new IP where this is actually now getting into a safety concern. We, we talk yeah. about this on the channel a lot that Disney needs to increase capacity. And the reason that we talk about increasing capacity is not always just because they need more people in the parks. It's sometimes because there are dangerous bottlenecks and main street. And what we just witnessed is a dangerous bottleneck. When you have that many people trying to escape through, through that corridor, yeah. And there's a perceived significant threat in that corridor. And you have these people who are in this area also being told to uh, crouch and hide in place, which, by the way, is a recipe for you not existing anymore if a baddie comes in your direction. I mean, that yeah. you should not do that. And I'll just say that, folks. If, if there's a baddie in your place and you can get away, get away. That's what you should do. You should get away from the danger. Um, Vash, Disney is intent on spending money, it seems to me, to replace things and then claim that it's an expansion, when in fact, it may actually now be a real security concern that they're not expanding so that they can handle crowds, especially in emergency situations. Is this much to do about nothing? Am I making a, a mountain out of a mohill, or do you think this is a legitimate complaint that Disney really needs to take uh, consideration of? No, I don't think you're making a mountain out of a molehill at all. I know Disney has looked at this multiple times and seen that, oh, yeah, we can probably do something better here. Even as early as what Disneyland Paris is opening, you have the two arcades on the side in order to deal with uh, parade traffic and so forth and to make it more navigable uh, while there's a main event or something occurring on Main Street because even they understood, yeah, probably the single <laughs> entrance uh, structure uh, with a with a very narrow corridor there, not, probably not the best design choice, especially for a park that serves, I want to say this park serves at full build out, maybe 100,000 people all going through a narrow corridor that is Main Street. We could probably augment that. We can probably, you know, have uh, areas on both sides available for this. And Disneyland actually did this already. They have a temporary walkway that they constructed on the Tomorrowland side of that park that allows for access uh, for from Town Square to the hub area. Area, uh, when an event is actually taking place on Main Street itself, like fireworks or parades or anything like that, and uh, and and 
well, when they really need it, then they open up the west side as well. That's kind of along the Jungle Cruise corridor. And they've constructed uh, uh, temporary tents that they can set up to hide the backstage areas as much as possible. So Disney understands and recognizes this problem. I'm surprised that we haven't seen investment on that same scale at the Magic Kingdom. That Main Street Theater, that was on the table. And then for some reason it was taken off. And you talk about security response, and I think it's a great uh, topic as well because... I mean, the, you remember the the Toontown brawl that happened? What I want to say, 2019, 2018. It was something insane. Like that. We've had we've had multiple fights, Vash, where uh, the fights continue on and continue on. So cast right. members are not allowed to intervene. Security gets there and is standoffish. Takes forever for the police to get there. And this is this is the result of that, right? Like, yeah. the idea that you can contain fights forever and it's never going to break out into something bigger is insane. It's crazy. It is indeed, and you have to have a, a a very good security presence. I know even like local amusement parks, for example, like Knott's Berry Farm, uh, have been have been upping the amount of security and the security presence, and you can kind of see them in uh, various sections of that park. They've instituted, I think, a chaperone policy, right, in order to mitigate some of uh, their issues that they're that they're having. Like the Toontown brawl, that was just insane to me because I think it was like I want to say it was anywhere between five ten minutes before security actually stepped in and security's not far away from that specific location it's just insane it's crazy if people feel they can get away with it then they will and that's the unfortunate uh, side effect of our of our of our culture but this right here yeah i mean you can't have everybody going up and down main street anymore as your only way in or out of this park especially when this is it just booked out for capacity. 100,000 people down that narrow, narrow quarter. That is crazy. Well, I'm, I'm also shocked, Vash, at, you know, them not spending the money in the way that improves the park in the way that is, that, that's important. Yeah. That's one thing. I'm also amazed that there was not a better protocol in place. This idea that, I mean, I, let me show this to people. Uh, Please. So the people who are huddled inside these buildings, you can exit out the back of these. There, there are exits out the back. Um you can exit out the back uh, of the other side as well. There are exits back here. You can get people into the backstage areas and out of the main street, uh, you know, shops where they'll they'll be safe. And you can exit them down uh, out around the chamber of, of commerce, or you can even take them out the uh, exit here to the bus stops. Yeah. Um, you know, th there are ways to get people out of here. The idea that security came in and said, "Huddle in place," when you think that there's an active a uh, person wishing to do harm. Yeah. That's crazy. That is well, crazy that that was happening. Bad, bad protocol, in my opinion. And think about this as well. I mean, if you think about Epcot, they have the International Gateway right at the back of that park that you can actually leave from. I mean, what if Magic Kingdom were to have an adjoining hotel where you could actually leave from and, and not put so much pressure on Main Street? Uh, look, look at this, Vash. Let me show you this. Hang on a second. Let me show you this. Please. Okay. This is during the fog of war. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. They don't. They don't know what's going on yet. They haven't. Yeah. Uh, there's no way they've figured out everything yet. They put all the people. This is this is what's mind blowing, because we yeah. were told one thing. We were told there was no evacuation. They put all these people into a giant crowd, like yeah. shoulder to shoulder, back to to chest, you know, and put cast members in a line, and controlled them and walked them out of the park. Look at that. If there is somebody wishing to do harm, then look out. You have just done the worst thing possible. And I don't see yeah. how, you know, in this kind of a scenario that they could have ascertained this quickly. Oh, there's no actual threat. There's nothing going on. Blah, blah, blah. Maybe they did. Maybe they did. But I think from a cautionary standpoint, this is probably not the way to handle it. Yeah. No, I would, I would, I would, I would definitely agree, and and this is why multiple exits and entrance points uh, for your park, and you don't maybe have to use them, obviously, on a daily basis, but having them there in instances like this is probably the right way to go. Um, uh, it's just it's. It's just so unfortunate how how this whole thing has happened, and it it seemed like Disney didn't really have a procedure in place in which to in which to deal with this. And honestly, and that's, too, bro, that's shocking, Vash. It's right. shocking that they didn't have a code, and maybe they did. Maybe it just doesn't seem that way in hindsight. But you would have thought there'd been a code that would have been called, and everybody yeah. would have known. Here's what we do in this situation. 
Yeah, it's it's crazy because Disney of your, you know, had a lot of procedures and stuff in 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 place to deal with this. I know, like when the Yippies uh, um, took over Disneyland back in the 1970s, uh, Dick Nunes, who understood that that might occur on that day, actually had a police uh, behind Main Street in order to deal with that situation as quickly as possible. You would think that there'd be mitigation measures in place in order to in order to uh, prevent mass chaos and also to you know fights breaking out at disney parks pro i mean it has become so such a stressful experience to go to disney you gotta think uh, you know between multi-pass lightning lane between dis- dining reservations between the cost to actually get in here and all the stuff that you have to do to actually have a vacation at one of these places you have to think pro that you know, some of this could have been mitigated in terms of the stress level of all of these guests by Disney themselves. We talked about this a lot and how it's a very stressful experience to go now and how, you know, you think about Universal. You don't see this at Universal. You don't see this at a lot of these different uh, places that, that aren't as stressful to go. You got to think that's that's part of this too. So, Vash, let's talk about some of the mistake points as it as it appears to us. Now, we're not privy to all the information, but some of these seem to be just common sense to me. So security should have been on the spot once the fight broke out. That would have present that would have prevented the hysteria that happened if a balloon was indeed what made the popping sound. That would have stopped that. Um, Then once you had a situation where where guests were panicked and running and you had calls coming into 911 or what have you, um, all of the work lights that are on top of the Main Street uh, USA buildings should have been turned on. Background music should have been turned off. The yeah, castle yeah. should have been lit up to white. All lights come on and you get on the PA system and you say, ladies and gentlemen, you know, you, you give instructions for what's going on. And hopefully as soon as possible, you can say, ladies and gentlemen, we can confirm that there is no danger in the magic kingdom, you know, and, and give instructions on how to exit the park if that's what you're going to do. And then you certainly don't bunch up, you know, your guests, because if you're 99% sure that there's no threat, there's still a 1% chance that you haven't gotten it right and somebody pulled a fast one on security. So you don't bunch up everybody. You disperse them as best as possible and you send them out as many exits as possible. But going back to the broader uh, issue, Vash, uh, Disney continues to want to spend on things that uh, destroy older parts of the park and just replace them with new IP. And they don't seem to me to be spending money on the things that actually matter, like really good security like really good security teams and greater foot traffic capacity that would allow pedestrians to not be bottlenecked into dangerous situations. Vash, I'll give you the final thoughts on all of this. Yeah, there are so many things that could be done in order to mitigate a situation uh, like this in the future, but also to, to, to improve their procedures and so forth. The, the, the way that you expand is definitely as crucial as just expanding itself. We know that uh, the Disney parks, at least at Walt Disney World, haven't expanded for quite some time. Again, like I was saying before, what if you had adjacent hotels that you could maybe evacuate people from uh, in, in, in that, that connects uh, similar to like Epic Universe, for example, right? So that you have multiple ingress and egress points in a case of an emergency. Why not spend more on security teams and 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 augment security presence in multiple places, not just have it at one central hub, which I believe is the current status of Walt Disney World, but but I'm not, I'm not sure. Uh, you you could. You, there are a myriad of different things you, you could improve the the safety as well as the guest experience, and yet it doesn't seem like they're very committed to do so. Again, the arcades that Paris has, why don't we have those at Magic Kingdom, one of the most attended theme parks in the world? And why don't we have uh, procedures in place in order to deal with these issues so it doesn't become chaotic? Again, all these things they could be invested in. But for some reason, we might be looking at, I don't know, retheming Main Street, retheming the uh, Liberty Square, getting rid of the Liberty Bell, and doing something with the Rivers of America, which is insane to me. It's just, it's, it's, it's crazy. There are things that people uh, could all rally around when it comes to this spark. Again, you know, I think the Main Street Theater concept was actually a, a decent idea. I think also, too, a connecting hotel, I think, would be very, very cool, and you can charge up the ying for it. But for some reason, we're not interested in that, and I think that's um, to Disney's detriment, and maybe to the detriment of the safety of guests. Absolutely. Uh, Vash, I've got the uh, Disney statement. 
says, uh, we appreciate the immediate response of the Orange County's Orange County Sheriff's Office to quickly assess and clear the situation. Normal operations have resumed and the park is now closed for the evening. Uh, that was what they issued. That that doesn't seem to me to uh, fully state that, hey, we evacuated the whole park. Um, and there were some people pushing back and said, no, it wasn't evacuated. Looks to me like it was. Um, looks to me like we can do better on this. Vash, someone who's doing better uh, every single day is, of course, you with that pod place and that park place. How do you possibly juggle the two channels that you do so well? <laughs> well, you know, it's a it's a lot of work and effort, but hey, we are committed to bringing the best content for you, whether it be that park place, two videos a day, by the way, at least. And we have a live stream on uh, noon Eastern on Thursdays on that park place. So please check us out. And on that pod place, we are releasing the genre guys after 90 days from seeing it on the WWE Pro channel. So you can check us out right there. We're also doing Hollywood Backlot with Lou and you as a live show every single Sunday at 2 p.m. Eastern. Also, to 2 30 p.m eastern on tuesdays we do a live show on t3po or that pod place as well so please go ahead and check us out you know it's 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 a it's a lot bro but again we are committed to bringing you the best content that we possibly can from all of the that park place network so thank you so much sir for the opportunity well it is an honor and folks uh, as we get ready to say goodbye a reminder to disney we're not out to get you we just think that instead of uh, off-brand cars, IPs destroying the beauty of the park, maybe you should be spending that money on uh, resolving these sorts of situations, giving yourself the best ability to get guests out in a safe and timely manner. Folks, uh, drop a comment down below. Let us know your thoughts on this situation and whether or not you think that the news media and perhaps Disney and beyond uh, handled this in the best way. We'd love to know your commentary and know what's on your mind. Like, share, subscribe, and share the sucker out on your favorite social media platforms. Folks, we'll see you real soon because thrice is nice. Three videos a day right here on the channel. Hope you have a great Labor Day, Labor Day weekend. Uh, be good, be kind, and be with those you love. Folks, until the next time, keep learning, keep growing, and keep having fun. This is Wilton the Troll reporting for That's Park Place, and I'm surrounded by loving and adoring people who are peacefully trying to make sure that poor kids aren't cold in the winter. And just behind me, you can see a totally natural bonfire for making cookies or making marshmallows. Yeah, so, Wilton, we're, we're really appreciate the effort and stuff, but uh, we're looking for real and, you know... Accurate news reporting on that park place. So not like most news outlets, huh? No. 